This is Algebra 2, Chapter 5, Section 2, in which we will be dividing polynomials. Okay. There are three different types of division problems. One type is the like the first few here, where you are dividing by a single termed thing. When you have that situation where you're dividing by a single termed thing, the best thing to do is put it underneath each term. So 20C4D2F uh, divided by 4CDF minus 16CDF squared over 4CDF plus 4CDF over 4CDF. Then it's just using the rules from last time to simplify. 20 divided by 4 is 5, c to the 4 minus 1, d to the 2 minus 1, f to the 1 minus 1. So the first term is 5c cubed d. 16 divided by 4 is 4, c divided by c cancels, d divided by d cancels, f2 over f1 becomes just negative 4f. And then here, everything matches. Something divided by itself is 1. Okay. Now, this looks like a multiply problem, but it's really a divide problem because of this negative power that's attached to everything here. So we're going to treat this just like we did the first one. When you see that negative power around stuff, it goes to the bottom. So we split it off into two separate problems, 18x squared y over 3xy, 27x cubed y squared z over 3xy. Simplify each term separately, and you end up with 6x plus 9x squared yz. Okay. I'm going to ask you to Take a second here and try this problem out, and then come back and we will check your results. Since this is a negative power and it's just a single term, I'm going to put it underneath each one, and then simplify here, simplify here, simplify here, to c cubed d squared plus 4 c squared d minus 6c. Okay. Hopefully you got that one, and you're ready to try the second kind of division. The second kind of division is called polynomial long division. Okay. It's just like long division that you learned back in third grade, fourth grade, somewhere in there, with numbers. It's the same idea, you're just using algebraic terms instead of just simple arithmetic terms. So we're going to set the thing up to look the same kind of way. x minus 5 divides into x squared plus 3x minus 40. Now when you do polynomial long division, you want the terms to be in order from smallest or from biggest power to smallest power and biggest power to smallest power looking just at the, the terms of the variables, the powers there. So now, what can you multiply x by to get x squared? We would need to multiply by x to make an x squared. Distribute this to each term. x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Now, just like you did back in elementary school, after you got this number here from multiplying, you subtracted. We're going to subtract here as well. x squared minus x squared cancels. Positive 3x minus negative 5x makes a positive 8x. And then, just like before, you used to bring down the next number. We bring down the next term here. 
what do I need to multiply x by to make 8x? I need a positive 8 to make that a positive 8x. 8 distributes to those, makes 8x minus 40. 8x minus 8x is 0. Negative 40 minus negative 40 is also 0. So we don't have a remainder. Okay. Now they can present this in a little bit different format too. Okay. They're going to present this sometimes, in, just like before, it looks like a multiplication problem, but it's really not. It's a division problem because of this negative power. So I'm going to rewrite it so that it looks more like a division problem. And now I know how to set up by dividing. Notice also I switch this around negative a plus 3 to make life a little simpler for myself. Negative a times what makes a squared? I need to multiply by a negative a. Negative a times negative a is positive a squared negative a times 3 is negative 3a. Subtracting 7a a squareds cancel, 7a minus negative 3a is 10a. Bring down the negative 11. Negative a times what makes positive 10a? I need a negative 10. Distribute and then subtract negative 11 minus negative 30 is 19. This time we have a remainder, so we need to see how to write this with a remainder. We write the terms that were up here, negative a minus 10, plus 19 over what we divided by. Just like in elementary when you would get a remainder of 2, you would put like 2 thirds or whatever you divided by. Okay. Let's do one more of this nature before we move on to the third kind of division. We've got x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6 divided by x minus 3. Now this one throws a little curveball at us. Some of you probably noticed, hey, they skipped x here. We need to account for that when we write our division. It needs to go in order. Cube, squared, first power, and then plain number. So we need to account for that zero and put it in since they missed it. x times what makes x cubed? x squared. Distribute the x squared. Subtract negative 4 minus negative 3 is a negative 1x squared bring down the next term. x times what? To make negative x squared I need a negative x. So negative x distributes. Subtraction gives us negative 3x and then bring the 6 down. x times what makes negative 3x? I need a negative 3. Distribute and subtract. Again, we have a remainder, so we need to account for that in our answer. All the terms from the top plus the remainder over what we divided by. Okay. If you wanted to put minus 3, you could, but I don't just so that I'm always in the habit of adding the remainder onto it. I just put the negative up here. comes out the same in the wash, but whatever you want to do. The third and final kind of division is called synthetic division. And it's a shorter process for how you do it. Okay. You notice I've got a little half box here and a line and a half box down here. 
that's always going to be in play when you do synthetic division. Okay. The uh, coefficients up here line up into a row here. 2, 2 from the x cubed, negative 13 from the x squared, 26 from the plain x, and negative 24 the constant. Now we need to figure out what number we're working with. So we solve an equation, x minus 4 is equal to 0, so x is equal to 4. We take the divisor and we solve it, and that's the number that goes inside the box up here. Okay. Now the way synthetic division works is you bring down the first number, and then you multiply the 4 times the negative 2 and put it up here in this row, this blank row, to make 8. Add these together, negative 5. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Add and get 6. 4 times 6 is 24. Add and get 0. Now we're ready to write our final answer. We started with x cubed, and we divided by 1 power of x, so that leaves us x squared. 2x squared minus 5x plus 6, plus no remainder. Okay. Let's try another one out. And again, hopefully you'll notice that we skipped over a power. Okay. When they skip over a power, just like before, we need to account for it. We need to put a zero for that cubed power. Okay. And oops, I forgot to cover that up. Oh well. A is negative two is the number in the box. Bring down the four, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay. Now we have our list of values to go into our final answer. We were a4, so now we become a to the third. 4a third minus 8a squared plus 18a minus 40 plus our remainder term over what we divided by. Okay. One last one where they throw another curveball at us. You'll notice here we're going to have a number inside here to work with. When there's a, a coefficient on that x, you need to divide everybody by it right away. So I'm going to take a 2 out of every term in the whole problem and cancel out the 2. That tells me then that the divider number needs to be a negative 1 half. Again, there's no x cubed, so I needed to put a 0 in place for it. And then just like before, multiply, or bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay. So when we do our final answer, 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 1, we're okay there, but when we do our remainder step over here, we need to remember to put that 2 back in. So 2 times this makes 3 over the original divider. Okay, That one's a little bit trickier, but I think you can handle it. As always, if you had questions, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you to ask, and we will see you in class.